cabinet is so weird. The boy put his toys in it. He closed the door in the blink of an eye. When he opened it again, the toys came back to life. This made him very curious. He reached out to touch the little savage. But it pulled out a long knife. Mark immediately withdrew his hand. Apparently, from the savage's point of view, the boy looked like a giant. But when he reached out again, the savage, in an attempt to protect himself, to protect himself, the savage gave Mark a sharp jab. Luckily, after a brief conversation, and realized that Mark wasn't a bad guy, he was able to let down his defenses. In order to survive here, the savage jumped onto Mark's hand, and became his little brother. Mark found a toy tent for the wild man to sleep in, but he didn't like the hard material of the tent, and then Mark thought of the cupboard. He put the plastic tent in and closed the door. When he opened it again, the tent was alive. He arranged a place for the savages to stay. He thought it must be a hallucination, so he found the toys under the bed, enough to put it in the cupboard. The toy didn't have time to react, so he closed the window of the cupboard. When he opened it again, his jaw dropped. The toys inside were fighting with each other. The cabinet was shaking when the toys came back to their senses and aimed their weapons at Mark. He closed the door, and in the morning, the tree outside the window attracted the attention of the savages. Mark put the savage in a shoebox, in a shoebox and took it straight to the yard. The wild man stepped out of the shoebox and saw that the trees and flowers outside had grown taller than he was. Gary wanted to build him a house. While he was looking for materials, he heard birds chirping. He went out and chased the birds away. The squatting savage returned home, only to find that it had been burned by the birds. Gary rushed to the toy doctor. Gary rushed to get a toy medic and put him in a closet. The door opens and the medic wakes up again. Gary also wanted to bring the toy to life, put him in the magic cabinet. Mark brought him to the savage and let him heal the savage's foot while he watched with a magnifying glass. And when the wound was healed, the boy put him back in the cabinet and turned him back into a toy before Mark left for school. Before he left for school to make it easier for the little savage to get around. And then he put the armored soldier in his locker. Before the soldier could react, before the soldier could react, Mark took the shadow prisoner. Mark snatched the shadow pal, then quickly closed the ghost door and turned him back into a toy. Mark hands the savage his axe for his own protection, but he didn't realize how versatile the wildling was. Soon enough, he was building an alibi with his axe. He thought the wild man might be lonely when he was at school during the day, and he found a little toy man and put him in a cupboard and brought him back to life. When the old man saw Mark's giant height, he had a heart attack. He fell to the ground and died. Mark blamed himself. He thought he had killed the old man. He told the savages to wrap the old man in a big dumpling with a rag, while they used a shovel to dig a hole in the concrete. When the hole was almost deep enough, Mark pulled the old man out of his pocket. He buried him in the pit on the spot. That day, Mark brought his classmates home and told him about the minifigures, seeing how amazing this cabinet was. He put the toy cowboy inside, and the moment he opened the door, the cowboy rode out on his horse. Suddenly the horse braked, and the cowboy fell from the sky. Luckily, at the crucial moment, Mark grabbed him with and laid the cowboy on the bed. He saw the little savage in the distance, and thought he was being attacked. He pulled out his pistol and was about to shoot. Luckily, Mark found him just in time. Mark caught him in time and locked him in a drawer. A little man, 10 centimeters tall. The boy locked him in a drawer, but while he was sleeping, the little man escaped from the drawer by following a shoelace. He used the shoe as a shield to start a fierce fight with the savage. Before the cowboy could fire a few shots, his horse got spooked and ran away. The wildling took advantage of the situation and shot his head off with an arrow. While trying to catch up with him, Mark carried the cowboy to his bed with the fingers and acted as a peacemaker between the two miniatures. To keep them from fighting, Mark put them in a bag and took them to school. A classmate wanted to show off the minifits, but Bear refused. Their constant bickering attracted the teacher's attention. The teacher told the students to open their bags for fear of confiscating the minimoys. Luckily, the clever minions disguised themselves as toys in advance, so they were not exposed. She told them not to bring it to school again. When they got home, Mark pulled out another toy. He wanted to bring one of them back to life to be his wife. But when he turned around, he realized that the cupboard with the magic power was gone. He searched the house for it. Unexpectedly, the cabinet hid itself in the warehouse, but the key to the cupboard accidentally fell into a crack in the floor. Anxious little savage saw this and immediately went into the floor. Luckily, it didn't take long for him to hook the key with his foot and brought them up successfully. In the evening, we were watching TV. They were watching TV, and the cowboys were hunting the wildlings, and the little wildlings saw it. So he raised his bow and shot the cowboy. He fell to the ground and couldn't move. Mark rushed to revive the toy medic. And with the medic's help, the cowboy soon woke up. The cowboy woke up, and the savages realized their mistake. Now Mark thinks they don't really belong here. And his curiosity almost got the cowboy killed. 
NL, Mark was going to send them back to the world where they belonged. Though he was sad to see them go, Mark closed the door, and when he opened it again, they were toys again, 